Hi again. Let's uh, continue talking about JavaScript and the shopping cart. And, uh, you know, here I am. I've got my shopping cart. We can add some items to the cart, clear the cart. And the cart right now displays the name of the item, the number of items you have, the price per item, and then the total for, you know, for that number of items, right? And then at the bottom, it displays the total cost for the cart right so all of this stuff so what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some functions so you know maybe if I, I have a button here where I can click to add one more of these or click to subtract one and then maybe a button you know X or something to delete this item from the cart so let's let's try the delete item from the cart first okay and uh, you know, again, you know, this isn't so much making the best shopping cart in the world. This is really just about exploring JavaScript, and we're just using the shopping cart as sort of a, a vehicle to test ideas, right? And right now, I have a button that lets me clear the entire cart, but it might be convenient if we had a, a button here that just let you remove a particular item. And if you recall, you know, we actually created a function to help us do that. So we've got a helper function that will already take care of it. We just need to implement it in our, our, our interface, right? So, you know, looking at my code here, I have a function called remove item from cart. And essentially, when we remove an item from the cart, you know, we pass the name of the item. This function searches the cart, you know, by looping through the cart array matching you know each item in the cart against the name that you pass and then when it finds that item it removes one of that from the count okay so this this function actually just removes one item with each click so this would be for like a plus or minus button right and then uh, we've got this remove item from cart all and this does essentially the same thing it you know it loops through the entire cart it finds the item by its name and then it just pretty much removes that item entirely from the cart array and then it's done okay so let's take a look at that right so uh, how are we gonna do this well let's do it this way I'm gonna scroll up to the top and I'm gonna find the display cart function so here is where we are displaying you know the list of items here Okay, and so we've got the name, the count, the price, the total, and I want to add a button to that. So what I'll do here is I will find that function. Oh, there it is, right? And, uh, you know, here I've got my, my list item. It's got to end with this tag, right? So we got to begin with a list and then end with the list. Maybe I'll do this. I'll put this plus sign there. And then that will sort of show us that this is where, you know, the, the, the first tag begins and this is where the closing tag is. And then we're putting all these things in between those two tags, okay? And then now, you know, after the total, I actually want to add, you know, maybe a space like this followed by a button, right? So actually, you know what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll just put a space there and then I'll make a button and you, you could make this a link it could be a lot of things um, you know I'm just gonna use a button um, and then we could style it too so you know it really the fact that it looks like a button here doesn't really matter because our style sheet could make it look like anything okay so I'll put a button here and we'll say you know delete right maybe, maybe we should just do the X maybe that'd be good right let's make a small button right so let's give this button an ID, or actually not an ID, but a, a class name. And since I've got the double quote on the outside, the value for an attribute, and class is an attribute, and attributes always follow the form, attribute name equals value, and the value always goes in quotation marks. So here, we're going to put the attribute here equals value and then the value will have to be the single quote because we've got a double quote on the outside of our string so let's put this in here and call it you know um, delete item okay how about that right now now we've got this and we can you know add a function to this through our JavaScript you know like just like we did here and 
just like we did, you know, up here with clear cart and uh, this add to cart, right? <clears throat> Pardon me. And the thing is, um, the thing is, when we load the page, this delete item won't exist until after the function, you know, display cart is is called on. Okay, right? So it doesn't exist until this happens. So that means that if we tried to add, you know, an action to all the things with the class delete item, like this, right, nothing would happen, right? So, you know, I can't really add a click to them because, you know, they don't exist, right? I mean, they will exist in the future, but at the time that JavaScript executes this line of code, we haven't, you know, created these things yet. Now, we could move this down below where we first call, you know, display cart, right? Okay, so we could move this down further so that we, you know, we called on display cart here maybe. Even I could just do it right here, right? We could say, oh yeah, you know, display cart, right? Well, that would be okay, but then what happens when we, you know, delete the cart or add or remove items from the cart and then the cart gets redisplayed? Well, you know, when you add a click action to an element, you're adding it to the specific element that's on the page, right? And what happens is you know, when you delete that element, the function goes with it, the click function, and then when you add a new item with the same name, this code doesn't get added to it again unless you actually invoke, you know, this jQuery, you know, click method, right? So this isn't really going to work, okay? So what we need is we need a method where, where jQuery is going to constantly be looking at the page to find items that have delete item in them, okay, right? Or at least looking whenever you click, right? And we can do that with a thing called on. <coughs> and what on does is you're going to name an element. Okay, I'm going to put a couple quotes here, right? So we're going to name an element here, right, that is a parent or an ancestor for these you know, buttons that we have here, okay? And in our case, all of these buttons are going to be contained in the, um, in the list here for show cart, okay? So they're all going to be inside here, okay? As, you know, it's essentially our guys are going to be, you know, show cart, and then there's going to be a list item, and then there's going to be the name, the price, the count, and then the button, the delete button, right? So they're all going to be inside show cart. So what we'll do is we'll say show cart here. And then here we're going to say what function we're waiting for. So we're saying like, okay, you know, when a click event occurs on show cart, right, then we're going to do something here, right? So on a click, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know, did that click occur on an item that meets this description? Okay, so if it did, then we'll execute the function on the end here, okay? And the beauty of this is these items here don't have to exist at the time that we, you know, add the first, you know, on you know, call. So as soon as we, you know, as soon as we add this on thing, all, the only item that has to exist is this one. Okay. And then we're going to defer looking for these until after a click event occurs. And so if a click event occurs, we're going to say like, hey, you know, did it occur on something that meets this description? And if it did, we'll execute the function. Okay. Okay. So, so that's pretty good. So now how do we, how do we get to, you know, get to delete one of these items? Well, what we need is we need the name of the item, okay? And I kind of have the name here, but I, what I think I'm going to do is just to make it easy like we did earlier, I'm going to add the name also to the button as a, a data item. So I'll say data-name, and then I'll do the single quotes like this. And then I'll do a, a double quote, 
and two plus signs because I want to add, you know, cart array bracket name and put it inside here, right? And maybe I'll, I'll do this. I'll put it on the next line because that's getting pretty long. Okay, and there we go. So now let's, uh, let's take a quick test there and see if I've made any mistakes, right? There we go. Oh, there we go. No errors. So we're probably doing pretty good. There's my, my, my delete button, right? And our, our delete function hasn't done anything yet, but uh, if we inspect it, we should be able to see that it says, you know, class or button, class delete item. Um, data name is Apple, and that's the name of our, of our you know, uh, shopping cart item. And if I look at the other one here, it's going to say, you know, data name is Frisbee, right? So that's working pretty good. And now for our last step, we need to get the, <clears throat> pardon me, I was sick lately, so I'm clearing my throat a lot here. But the next step is we need to get the name here from data name and then call on the remove from cart function, right? And then pass it the name. So, so let's do that, right? So let's do var. Why don't we just put it in a variable here? We'll say name and then we'll use jQuery this. And so jQuery this, when we click on it, it's going to be the button that you clicked on. Okay, because the click action is going to occur on one of the items with delete item. And this is going to be the exact item that you clicked on, right? And then if you recall, we can use the ATTR method, attribute, right? To get the, the value from an attribute. And the attribute that we want to get is this one right here, data name. Okay, and that'll give us the, uh, the value in, in data name, right? And then we can say remove, and we've got uh, two functions, remove item from cart. That'll remove a single item. So if there was three uh, apples, it we would now have two. Or we can remove all of an item by saying remove item all, okay? And then this function, we have to pass the name to it, if you recall, right? So we'll put name here, okay? And then after we, you know, uh, remove items from the cart, then we'll probably have to, you know, display the cart again. So we should put in display cart. Okay, and that'll update the display of the cart. And there you go, right? So now we're using some of the other functions that we wrote earlier. Let's, let's give that a test. So we'll save it and hide it, and then I'll refresh it here. And oh, good, no errors. I'm always looking at the JavaScript co console here in case there's an error, right? And then let's click on apples. I probably can't eat 14 apples anyway, right? Oh, good, all gone. And there, now everybody's gone. I can add a couple Frisbees in, you know, add a couple shoes and a banana. Maybe add another shoe. Actually, you know, I don't need four shoes. I'll delete them. And that looks like it's working pretty good. Or we can clear the entire cart, okay? So anyway, so hopefully that, um, you know, gives you some other things to think about with JavaScript. And, uh, you know, feel free to post any questions to my YouTube channel or, you know, just enjoy. And I hope this is helpful to people. Um, thanks for watching.